So I was chatting to a photographer just before Christmas. You may have heard of him. His name is Paul C. Smith. He's got a YouTube channel and he's based in New Zealand. Uh, we was on the phone just before Christmas talking about photography and YouTube channels and stuff like that. And I was chatting away and I said to Paul, why don't you send me a couple of negatives that I can work on in the darkroom and see what I can come up with. And Paul said that was a great idea. So Paul being Paul, he went off and, <laughs> and, and uh, made this cinematic movie of this area where he was photographing. And I'll have to, I wrote it down because I can never remember the name of it. It's called, called T-Rang Eater. And uh, T-Rang... T Rang Eater, <laughs> T Rang Eater Lake, and it's a beautiful scene. Uh, there's this tree just coming out the lake. I don't know who decides to plant trees inside lakes, but this one seemed to work and it grew quite well. And it's popped up out the lake. Paul went down there, I took a photograph of it, and he sent me the negatives. And he, he sent me more than one, he, he sent me a whole series of this tree and the lake and some other scenery around it. But um, I'm only going to take one negative and make a print with it so that's what I'm going to be doing in this video I'll show you a little bit of Paul's stuff what he was shooting and for those of you who don't know Paul have never heard of his channel go check him out he's got some fantastic wonderful cinematically shot videos and it's all about photography um, mostly film photography on his channel so if you've never heard of him go and check out Paul so let's get back to the print I've already looked at the negatives and I've seen the photograph or the image or the negative that I want to make a print of I'm going to be using Ilford's the new glossy stuff, it's the uh, Ilford Multigrade Deluxe Glossy, the purple one. For Paul's print, this is a 9.5 by 12 inch uh, paper. But I'm only going to be... It's a square image, he uses a 6 by 6 Hasselblad. And I'm only going to be printing it 8 by 8 So I've got this 8 by 8 template that's going to be my easel, if you like, on the enlarger. So uh, I've already done some test strips, as you can see behind me here. So let's get straight into it. I'll explain what I've been doing already in the tests and then we'll get to make a print. I found it very interesting to study someone else's work, but like most of us, you soon know by looking at a negative which ones will work best for you and your own idea of a nice composition, exposure and print. The negative that I decided to print had a minimalistic feel with its composition staring at me as unusual and the ripples of water looking so naturally calm and tranquil. So with that in mind, all I needed to do was get the negative on the enlarger and start making some tests, and hopefully a nice print. So the negative I was looking at is quite contrasty and it's got some tones going on in there but I've got to be careful not to kill the tree you know make it too dark. So I did a first test strip with a two and a half grade filter and you can see I've got three, six, nine, twelve and fifteen and then I was looking at the tree here on, the, on, on six and I just thought it might be a little bit too dark so I decided to go for five seconds and do a test print at five seconds and when I did that uh, second test print at five seconds with two and a half grade filter. It was okay, the tree was still a bit too dark. I needed to do a little tiny bit of dodging around here, especially around the Reevee area for a, minus a couple of seconds. But I was more interested in the sky. I didn't want the sky to have no detail whatsoever. Um, I didn't want it to be the same as the inertia of the paper. I've got two chances. I could either pre-flash the paper, which I don't really want to go down that route, or I could try and just uh, use a contrast zero filter and try and bring this sky back in with a contrast zero. It's a low contrast filter, so it's not going to harm the darker areas of the image. So that's what I decided to do. So after I did five seconds with the two and a half grade filter, I then placed a 5p coin over the sky area. 
and then just did contrast zero filter for five seconds. Well, it just got a bit too dark. So I thought to myself, okay, we'll do it at three seconds instead. Okay, so it's a pretty easy print to make. I've got a two and a half grade filter in ready to go. I've got my dodge tool here, which is just gonna dodge the uh, bottom part of the, of the tree. And my timer is set to five seconds like we tested. So let's do two and a half grade filter, five seconds the whole print, just for two seconds, dodge the bottom of that tree. One, two. Now we put the contrast zero filter in. And this is going to be three seconds. That would just be enough to give that sky a little bit of tone, but also I still want to cover the bottom of that tree. Let's go. That'll do. Last thing to do is just make our border around the edge of the print, which I use this card for. So I've got to take the negative out, take the filter out. And just using this card, just going to make a small, cover the whole print, but just leave a small gap around each side and that will burst white light onto it. That will give me my black border. Just finishes the print off nicely. Now the idea of a border, I believe, the old fashioned way was, see it hadn't tampered with the cropping on the negative at all, was to show or file down a negative carrier. But I don't do that. I just do this purely for decorative purposes. And it goes. Let's turn it around this way. The border looks nice. The print looks nice. The sky looks good. You're just about to start seeing the mountains now in the background which is nice. So I've got the print at the moment sitting in my fixer tray. It's fixed, I've turned the lights on, I haven't washed it yet. Um, but Houston, I've got a problem. You can see the little mountains in the background and where I dodged the tree, I've killed the end of the mountain. So I'll have to use, do another reprint, this time use a smaller dodge tool, much smaller. And there it is, this is the final print hanging up to dry. So we can see uh, I've now recovered the mountains in the background there on, the, on that side of the tree and the rest of the mountains and the sky, we've got a different sky compared to the inertia of the paper, which is what I wanted. That grade zero helped me out there. Uh, just a tiny little bit of uh, dodge mark you can see just uh, behind the tree, but unless you're gonna look at a print and say, oh my God, look what's happened there, so be it. That's a nice print, so uh, I'm going to get this over to Paul off in New Zealand, get it posted and see what he thinks.
So that was that. Paul's got his print up on the wall. I've got a copy here as well. And it was quite good fun going through it and also communicating with Paul about the videos. If you want to check out Paul's side of the story, jump onto his channel. I'll put a link in the description and uh, he's got his side of the story over there as well. Um, but, you know, I've been doing this channel for a little over three years now. And in that time, I've met some amazing people. I spoke to some great guys and also you guys as well that are watching all the videos and you're making your comments and, and, and giving me inspiration as much as giving other people inspiration, you know. It's amazing how these platforms can get people together talking about something that they enjoy, in this case, film photography. So uh, thank you very much for watching. Thanks to all you guys that subscribed. Subscribe to me, subscribe to Paul, and I'll catch you next time. T Rang Eater. T Rang. Called T Rang Eater. And uh, called T Rang. T Rang Eater. <laughs> T Rang Eater Lake.